It was an interesting race strategy in Spain, as the new layout meant that the tyre wear would be a significant factor in the way that this Grand Prix would end. It was a great performance from Mercedes, as they were the ones to take the fight to the Red Bulls this weekend. And there's a lot to talk about, so here's my five things we learned from the Spanish Grand Prix. My name's Andy, and this is Behind the Drive. A walk in the park. This race was a walk in the park for Max Verstappen. He was in a field of his own at the front as he led every single lap. From qualifying, where he managed to put his car on pole despite some tricky conditions, he didn't really need to use the mirrors too much from there. To be honest, the only thing that seemed to be able to stop Verstappen this weekend was the track limits, as he went over the white lines enough to get a black and white flag, but managed to avoid a five second penalty whilst also setting a fastest lap. It was a huge performance from Verstappen, and with his teammate a long way back and failing to reach the podium this weekend, he extended his lead in this championship to 53 points, which is a huge lead when we're just seven races into the season. The Red Bulls seem dominant and have something more in the locker in my opinion, which isn't the best thing for the sport as a whole, but it was a huge achievement for Verstappen with a hat-trick of victories. Perhaps we may even see Vettel's consecutive win record broken in 2023. There are signs that there may have been competition later in this year, or perhaps into 2024, but for now, you've got to appreciate the brilliant performances from this team and for Sappen, so it's clearly a green box for this weekend. Mercedes are on the way back. Last weekend saw an introduction of Mercedes' new car. On the surface, it looks like the whole philosophy of the car has shifted with the zero side pod concept now firmly gone from that team. They wanted to bring these updates in at the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix at Imola, and that circuit would have given them a better environment to test their new parts than they got in Monaco. Ultimately though, the circuit in Barcelona was the perfect environment for testing these parts, and it seems that both Mercedes drivers are enjoying these upgrades so far. The qualifying on Saturday saw these two drivers make contact with a bit of miscommunication between the pair and the team. Russell did seem to struggle in a tricky session as he ended up 12th on the grid, but Hamilton was able to prove the pace of that Mercedes car and it seemed like he was competing for the front row in Q3. He ended up 5th which became 4th on the grid, but there were some positive signs for the team as they continued to learn about and set up their new car. In the Grand Prix, George Russell seemed to gain an advantage through Turn 1. He had good traction off the line and was three wide going into that corner. He opted to bail down the escape road and take the supposed penalty for doing so, and from there it certainly looked like he'd gained an advantage as he was four positions up after the first lap. The stewards deemed he'd done everything that would be expected of him, which meant he was making excellent progress with a rapid race car. Going further into the Grand Prix, the Mercedes car seemed to have excellent tyre wear. Both drivers managed to extend their first stint on the soft tyres and stopped much later than all of the other runners on that compound. Hamilton, for example, stopped a whopping 10 laps later than Carlos Sainz. They then had brilliant pace on the medium tyre, and given that pace advantage, they were able to make the overtakes on track and could find their way up the order. It was clear after that first stint that the Mercedes drivers were both looking forward and competing for the podium finishing spots, rather than being worried about the Ferrari of Carlos Sainz or the two Aston Martin drivers. What's interesting about this development is the fact that earlier this season it was the Aston Martin car that seemed to be the lightest on its tyres, and this weekend that advantage seemed to have gone relative to Mercedes. The second half of the race saw the team managing the gap to Sergio Perez, but some sensible decisions in terms of strategy meant that the Mercedes team had him covered. In the end, it was a double podium finish for Mercedes, and yes, they were a long way back behind the Red Bull team, but it was a significant improvement and a solid performance. This new car is one that seems to have taken Mercedes on a path back towards the front. They will have learned from their rival teams and seem to be the second fastest team around the circuit in Spain. It'll be interesting to see if they can maintain this development path in this season, and if they can continue to take the fight to Ferrari and Aston Martin. But for me in this race, it's got to be a green box for Mercedes. Before we look at the fact that Ferrari is lost this season, I want to take a moment to ask you to subscribe to Behind the Drive to see more Formula 1 insights from the 2023 season. Ferrari seemed lost. This weekend wasn't great for Ferrari. Charles Leclerc struggled in qualifying and ended up 19th as he was unhappy with the car and complained of a lack of rear end grip. The team opted to replace most of the rear end of his car as they failed to identify exactly what had gone wrong for the Monegas driver. It seemed to not help Leclerc though, as he still struggled to make progress in the race, he didn't even get into the points and was even almost lapped by the leader. Meanwhile, Carlos Sainz qualified second, a strong performance and a good result to start on the front row at his home Grand Prix. 
but in the race, despite fighting for the lead going into Turn 1, he quickly dropped back from Verstappen and was vulnerable to the Mercedes cars behind him. This was another poor showing and he ended up 10 seconds behind Sergio Perez in 5th position. In the race, it seemed like the Ferrari team were making odd strategy calls. Sainz was adamant that he had more pace, but was still called into the pits, which ended up being 10 laps before Hamilton. And then the team opted to stop Leclerc, who was starting on the hard tyre one lap later after Sainz. It was a strange decision as the two drivers were clearly on very different tyre strategies. I didn't understand the logic of putting Leclerc on hard tyres and imply that he would run long into the first stint to then end up stopping him early anyway. I think if the rain had come for the team, it would have probably really struggled to get it right. And when it comes to the strategic races, there can't be too much confidence that the Ferrari team will ever perform. Perhaps they did as well as they could have done with Sainz today, but I certainly have very little confidence in this team right now. For me, the Italian setup deserves a red box for their weekend. The return circuit layout delivers. The Circuit de Catalunya has made several layout changes in the last few years. They've reprofiled the end of the back straight and changed the runoff areas in turns 1 and 2 in recent times, but this year's Grand Prix has seen the return of the high speed final two corners, replacing the chicane which was introduced in 2007. This change is something that has been called upon for years. The final chicane before the long back straight is something that seemed to stop the lap towards the end and make it harder for cars to follow through the final turn and onto the main straight. This change has been welcomed by many, but it has also given the drivers and teams a bit of a headache. The high speed nature of the final two corners has resulted in significant tyre wear to the front left tyre, which means that there were strategy decisions that needed to be factored in. Traditionally this circuit is a high tyre wear anyway, and often it's a decision between protecting the tyres and making the one stop work, or pushing with the two stop and trying to overtake on track. That decision seems to have shifted from being one between a two stop or even a three stop race. This makes things interesting. All three tyre compounds were used during the Grand Prix and throughout it wasn't clear which strategy would be the one to come out on top. In addition, to make this work, Pirelli have had to make the right decision with the tyres. They had high tyre wear in Monaco last weekend which made things somewhat interesting but this week they seem to have got it spot on. For me, the return of the final two corners have helped the racing even if that impact has been indirect as a result of the increase in tyre wear. The differing strategies meant that there was more overtaking in Spain, and to be honest, it was actually an interesting Grand Prix the whole way through. This circuit is often criticised as the teams regularly test here, but in 2023, we have to remember that pre-season testing took place in Bahrain. Perhaps that was also a factor in this season's Spanish Grand Prix being more of an exciting one. In the end, the Grand Prix saw differing strategies, which certainly made the midfield very interesting. The dominance of Red Bull still meant that there was no competition at the front, but it was still good to see that the circuit changes have worked, so it's a green box for that change. A rare off day for Alonso Fernando Alonso seemed to have an off weekend at his home Grand Prix. The Spaniard has been excellent all season and has generally moved his way up the order at each and every Grand Prix. The Aston Martin car has been brilliant in the races and coming into this weekend he had finished on the podium in all but one race and in that other race he finished fourth in Azerbaijan. This weekend Alonso qualified ninth and it was the first time this season that he was beaten by Lance Stroll. This came despite the fact that earlier this weekend in practice the AWS graphics showed a comparison between him and his teammate in each of the mini sectors and Alonso was faster in every single one. It was looking like a dominant performance, but in the end, he had a trip into the gravel during qualifying on an outlap, which he was very frustrated by as it impeded the rest of his qualifying. He ended up qualifying 9th and started 8th on the grid, and despite this starting spot, Alonso failed to make significant progress up the order. Instead of looking forward to the now usual competitors of Mercedes and Ferrari, they were competing with the midfield runners, and through the strategy, they ended up fighting with the Alpine of Ocon, the Alfa Tauri of Sonoda, and even the Alfa Romeo of Guan Yu Zhou. In the end, Alonso finished 7th, and was right on the tail of Lance Stroll. It was an interesting call as Alonso confirmed he wasn't going to overtake his teammate with 6 laps to go. This shows some awareness of the bigger picture, given he didn't want the Aston Martin team to be taking risks when they know that their car isn't as good as their rivals. But still, an interesting call when it comes to the driver's standings and Alonso's usual passion for finishing as high up the order as he can. This was a decent result considering the pace of some of the other cars in that front group, but it was still a step backwards for the team as a whole and certainly an off weekend for Alonso. 
You can't build a car that can be strong everywhere, unless you're Red Bull of course, but there was always going to be an off weekend at some point for Aston Martin, and they and Alonso will be looking to improve heading towards the Canadian Grand Prix in two weeks time. For me though, it's got to be an amber box for Alonso. Something wasn't quite right, but he probably still maximised the result for the whole team. Honourable Mentions It was a dreadful Sunday, but a brilliant Saturday for Lando Norris and McLaren. The British driver managed to qualify third in his McLaren, which is something that nobody would have predicted given how poor that team was at the start of this year. The team knew that their setup was geared towards qualifying, but it was still a brilliant performance that he delivered. In the race, Norris dropped back after making contact with Hamilton on the first lap, and from there his Grand Prix was over. But it was still a good performance and deserving of an honourable mention. Zhou Guan Yu also put in an excellent performance to take home two points from this Grand Prix. It was a strong result for him and the Alfa Romeo team, and it's rare for this team to be able to fight for good points. And he didn't put a foot wrong this weekend, and was way ahead of Valtteri Bottas. On the whole, the Spanish Grand Prix was a strategic battle. The strength of the Mercedes team was clear to see, and the progression bodes well for the rest of their season. It'll be interesting to see if they can continue this progress going into Canada.